How should we evaluate Oklahoma their first year in the Southeastern Conference? Because Oklahoma, it's no secret, man. Massive, massive brand. And now you put another massive brand on a sticker on the back of that helmet, which is, of course, the SEC. So I think there's something that needs to be discussed when it comes to how we should judge Oklahoma their first year in the SEC. First things first, though, make sure you're subscribed right here to the On3 YouTube channel. Oklahoma faithful, man. Y'all have been with us. For a long, long time, since we started this show, we've had y'all been subscribed to this operation, so we appreciate you for that. Make sure you're subscribed. Heck, double, double check you're subscribed so you don't miss anything we got going right here on this channel. The context around Oklahoma is crucial in 2024. Absolutely crucial because they're going to their first year in the SEC and everybody wants to ask the question, okay, well, they've had this positive trend. They went six and seven, then they went and won 10 games in the second year. So in, in year three in the SEC, they should go and compete for the whole conference, right? I'm not here to tell you that shouldn't be the case. But what I am saying is if they don't do that, I think you're going to kind of find yourself in that situation that we found ourselves in that first year in Norman, Oklahoma, where folks were saying, is Brent Venables the guy? Can he be a head coach? Context is key. So what is the context we have here going to the SEC? The first is the schedule is brutal. And that's not me making excuses. That's not me holding water for anybody. That's just the facts. All right? You play Tennessee. You're at Auburn. You play Texas at a neutral site, as you always do. You're at Missouri. You play Alabama. And you finish the year at LSU in Death Valley. So that's absolutely brutal. Also, a new quarterback. Jackson Arnold, as talented as he is, it's going to be his first year being the guy in Norman. Now, I've said it many times on here. I think what we saw in that bowl game as much as the turnovers discouraged you, I just saw a guy with a lot of talent who's still figuring out how to be a college quarterback. I think this spring season of the fall camp is going to be massive for him, kind of getting his feet underneath him. On top of that, though, 44% production from last year's offense returns. It's not a whole lot. You bring back a lot on defense, but offensively, there's going to be some new characters that have to step up in a very big way. So what does all this context mean? It just means from where I'm sitting, Oklahoma – as they move into the SEC, you're going to ask, I think, a little bit more of your coaching staff, a little bit more of Brent Venables to have a game plan in place to elevate your roster. And I'm not sitting here saying Oklahoma is going to be somehow on, on the bottom half of the SEC's talent level. I'm not saying that at all. Oklahoma is just used to, historically, having the best or second best roster in the Big 12 every single year. Oklahoma in 2024 recruited a top 10 class. However... It ended up being the sixth best in the SEC. It's not a knock on Oklahoma. It's just a reality. Hey, you're playing against more guys. They're going to be playing on Sundays when you line it up out there in the fall. Just a reality. So going back to this whole thought around Brent Venables and his staff elevating the roster, Oklahoma's got a good enough roster to win a lot of these games. But when I talk about elevating the roster, I'm saying you may not have as many matchups that you liked in the Big 12 Conference as you do in the Southeastern Conference. Just kind of the nature of the beast. So a coaching staff responsibility then is to create and find matchups that you like and make those work for you consistently, all right? It's not about having the most matchups. It's about taking advantage of your matchups as much as possible on every single Saturday. The bottom line, great coaches, great staffs, they pull the most out of their roster. You'll have to do that in the SEC with more talent being played against on every single Saturday. Now here's what I want to make sure we don't do. I alluded to it a little bit at the top of the segment. I want us to be really, really careful of giving into punchline culture. Now, for those of y'all that have been around this show for a while, you know what I'm talking about. If you're new, welcome again, subscribe. But the punchline culture is folks that just want to win Twitter. All right? They, they see something that makes enough sense to put out there as a tweet, and they put it out there, and they don't really care if there's enough depth behind it to you know, stand the test of time, but it... Makes sense in the moment. It wins the moment. It gets retweets. Punchline culture. The punchline culture for year one for Brent Venables in Oklahoma was, oh man, guess he's not a head coach. Hey, don't, don't you miss Lincoln Riley? That's not me dunking on Lincoln Riley. That's what folks were saying the first year in Norman. However, we said this for a long time. Hey, Brent Venables, they're playing a lot of close games. His first year as a head coach. Maybe they're going to get better. Do we think that's a possibility from year one to year two? They, of course, did. And if you're Brent Venables, you have a chance now to go and snag some receipts from some of those tweets. So I say all that to just bring, back us, or bring us back to this point. If you're Oklahoma, what they are this first year in the SEC is not what they are, period. Brent Venables is going into his third year being a head coach. What he is as a head coach this year in Norman is not what he's going to be his sixth year in Norman. 
Okay, so understand, this is a jumping off point. This isn't a defining year for Oklahoma in the SEC. So if Oklahoma goes out there and they win eight ball games, which I believe would be the over on their preseason win total, not my prediction, I'm just telling you right now, if they go and win eight games and they go eight and four, people are going to say, man, it's just not cut out for the SEC, huh? Just couldn't cut it. The SEC is a different ball game, isn't it? People are going to say that. All the while, not understanding or taking into account that I think Brent Venables really gets it when it comes to coaching college football. And that's not just me saying it. There is tangible evidence of Brent Venables and his improvement from year one to year two at Oklahoma. Hey, we weren't good enough last year in certain areas. Goes and hits the portal. They have really good offseason, clearly by nature of the 10-win season they just had this past year. And then also when he was at Clemson. Like, I know he wasn't the head coach there, but still having been around it, having seen it, Brent Venables knows what winning looks like. And I'm not talking about on the field. He knows what winning looks like from a roster perspective. He knows what winning looks like from a day-to-day on the field at practice perspective. He knows what winning looks like from a culture perspective. That matters. That matters. When you have seen something, been a part of it, it's a lot easier for you to recreate it. So what happens this year doesn't define who Brent Venables in Oklahoma is in the SEC. And I'm not telling you they can't still work to accomplish all their goals of winning the conference and making the college football playoff. That's all still, I think, very attainable. College football is the most unpredictable sport in the entire world. TCU played for a national title two years ago. Washington played for a national title this year. I promise you, very few people have that on their bingo card. So what I'm saying here is Oklahoma, give it some time. Give it some time, let it bake, and hold your opinion loosely while evaluating the context of what this 2024 season is for Oklahoma. I will say this, though. I think when you look forward for Oklahoma, you look into the future, top to bottom at Oklahoma from the fan base and how massive it is, the brand, from where I can tell the resources that Oklahoma has in-house, I believe Oklahoma, from what I've heard, this is no you know, super inside information based on concrete numbers. From what I've heard, people I've talked to, they say Oklahoma's somewhere in that top 30 when it comes to how they operate in the NIL space. And top 30 is great, but I think there is probably some opportunity for Oklahoma to even play ball at a higher level in that department. And I'll just say this, it feels a lot like Ohio State previously. Like you knew it was a big brand, you knew they had people that were dialed in, you know they had people with deep pockets. But Ohio State really started playing ball, it feels like, Over the course of this last year, look at what they did via the transfer portal. If Oklahoma starts playing ball to how I think they're capable of playing ball, it's going to be a massive disruptor, I think, for the rest of college football, and the impact of that will be felt. And Oklahoma's already been great through the portal, just so we're on the same page. But if they get more aggressive on the talent acquisition side of things with NIL, I think all bets are off. So keep... uh, Keep an eye on Oklahoma. Keep an eye on how they develop and how it bakes. But I'm just saying, this year, I'm not telling you to lower your expectations, but I am saying let's evaluate this on the understanding that this first year in the SEC doesn't define Brent Venables, doesn't define this team, doesn't define where they stand long-term in the Southeastern Conference. Heck, also, I'll throw this in there, too. Uh, If Jackson Arnold is just a dog, might be a total game-changer, too, for this offense and for this team and what they accomplish which is very much so a possibility. Five-star cat. Hey, we appreciate y'all. We love y'all. Make sure you're subscribed. Talking college football on this show, the hard count on this platform, the On3 YouTube channel every single day. I want y'all a part of it. We're going to keep this party rolling, and we will see y'all next time. Hey, y'all. Thanks so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel here to make sure you don't miss an episode of the hard count. Also, be sure to check out other videos on the On3 YouTube channel.